Hello guys. So we are looking at a very interesting topic in physics and the topic deals with measuring instruments. We have this topic also in chemistry. In fact, in all of science when this the top when the the, the syllabus is being introduced for the first time, this topic is looked at in depth. Why? Because measuring or measurement is very essential in all of science. As a science student, experiments are usually carried out in the lab, even outside the lab. But one way or the other, we need to carry out measurement at times. So we are going to look at the micro the vernier caliper. We might touch a bit of the micrometer screw gauge, but I'm going to talk on the vernier caliper and its calculation, its usefulness, and basically everything about the vernier caliper. But as you can see, we have other measuring instruments here that are used especially in physics, but in science generally. The first one here, as you can see, is the micrometer screw gauge. The micrometer screw gauge. We have screw gauge as for the first one. This second one here is also a micrometer screw gauge, but this one is called analog. This is analog, and this second one is called the dial micrometer screw gauge dial. Now, the dial is this circular part here that is calibrated similar to the way the hands of a clock is calibrated. Dial is any circular calibration that gives you measuring information. This is a speedometer. This is our vernier caliper, which is going to be our focus in this class, vernier, vernier caliper. This is the stop clock. Stop clock. This is our meter rule, or what we usually call our ruler. This is our compass. As you can see here, we have a compass, and if you look at it very closely, you see our cardinal points. We have north, we have east, northeast, southeast, and so on. This is also a vernier caliper, but this is a digital vernier caliper digital vernier caliper. This first one you saw here is an analog vernier caliper. The difference is that the digital is a bit more expensive, although it gives more precision compared to, in some cases, compared to the analog vernier caliper. But in some cases, both of them give the same precision. We have another, okay, this is also a compass, a ruler. This is a protractor that is uh, built inscribed inside a triangular ruler. This is a sextant. The sextant is used in navigation for those of us that may not know. Navigation is navigation is also part of uh, 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 navigation needs science and its measuring ideas. So, for instance, a sextant is used by sailors if they want to measure. The distance between one point and to another point that is inclined or elevated so they usually use this sextant all right now we we'll move to the main the main topic which is the vernier caliper the vernier caliper as we can see okay i my i misspelled Vernier caliper. This is the correct spelling. All right. So as we can see, the vernier caliper has several parts, which I would introduce in a second. But the usefulness of the vernier caliper is for accuracy, for precision, precision and accuracy. Now, what our our ruler, our normal meter rule, or what we call our ruler, can not do, the vernier caliper can do. For instance. If we are measuring with our ruler, if we look at this part on our vernier caliper, that is from here to here, which is a bit rectangular, we can see that it looks similar to our ruler. We have uh, calibrations from 0 here to 17 here in centimeters, 0 to 17 centimeters. Now, the reading accuracy, the reading accuracy of this uh, uh, meter rule, what it means is what is... What is the smallest length that can be measured with this uh, meter rule? And 
the smallest length we can measure is 0 0.1 centimeter as you can see so for instance we can go 12 after 12 we can say 12.1 we can say 12.2 you get the idea you can say 12.3 so we cannot go um less than that so let us say between 12.1 and 12.2 we have a measurement that falls in between you can see that we have reached the limit of what our meter rule can do and that is why we need our vernier caliper the vernier caliper has a reading accuracy ra it has a reading accuracy of 0 0.01 centimeter or or 0 0.1 millimeter this is the reading accuracy of our vernier caliper so this is the use in case you ask the question of what is why do we need the vernier caliper it has a much a better reading accuracy a, and it is it has a much higher precision compared to the meter rule so this is the labeled diagram of our vernier caliper you can see that we have this these parts are called the jaws these parts are also called the jaws now the difference between the two jaws is that these are use these two jaws here that is i'll call this jaw one and i'll call this jaw two jaw one and jaw two are used for measuring external diameter external diameter of let's say a rod or a pipe or a a let me say a, this shot that we used to play shots put or a small iron ball you can measure the external diameter of anything that is spherical or perhaps cylindrical jaw 3 i'll call this jaw 3 jaw 3 and jaw 4 that is these two here they are used for internal to measure internal diameter of a circular or cylindrical body let's say a test tube now a question could those questions usually come out and why can jam they'll say which of the following instruments is best used for measuring the internal diameter of a test tube so the answer is vernier caliper because vernier caliper like i said now you have seen one of these for is used for measuring internal and external diameters of a tube of a pipe of a rod so this set screw is used it can also be called lock screw in some cases you see lock screw they are the same thing it's used to lock the slider in place when you have because this jaw is the one that will be holding let's assume this is the ball we want to measure the iron ball we want to measure the diameter now so the jaws will hold it in place but to avoid this slider from because the jaw too is attached to a movable slider that goes that goes either forward or, or backward depending on the diameter of the ball itself so to avoid it um changing position from where you have placed it you have your lock screw that will lock it in place now uh, this depth bar here as you move the slider this slider which is attached to jaw 2 as you move it in the forward direction let's say you're moving it in this direction you move it in this direction the depth bar will be coming out it will be extending to be extending outwards so let's assume you want to measure the depth of a sort of 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 something. Let's assume it's a, it could even be a test tube. You want to measure. Remember, you know, a test tube looks somewhat like this, and you want to measure how deep it is. You see, use your vernier caliper. You just turn it, or, or in, uh, uh, you stand it in a vertical manner, so such that this depth bar will be going in like this until it gets to the depth of the test tube and don't forget as you are as for as a de as the depth bar is extending your slider is moving and you can also take your reading this is the main skill if there's anything that you should always remember is that the vernier caliper has two skills the main skill and the vernier scale the main scale is this part that we said it's the same thing as your ruler as your normal meter rule it has a, a calibration in millimeter in centimeter in some rare cases in inches as well 
uh, then this small, smaller scale, let's say like a smaller ruler, I can call it a smaller ruler, this is the vernier scale. It is a fraction of the main scale. So I'm going to move on now, but before I move on, there's something I want us to understand that the micrometer screw gauge, remember in the first slide I showed us the micrometer screw gauge. The micrometer screw gauge works similarly to the vernier caliper. The only difference is that the micrometer screw gauge has a much higher precision than a vernier caliper. I'm not going to go into micrometer screw gauge calculations, but just for you to know in case you ask a question. Now, the usefulness, you can also use a micrometer screw gauge, that is this guy. You can use this micrometer screw gauge to measure the diameter, the external diameter of a rod, but a very thin rod, a very thin sheet of paper, a very thin aluminum foil, something like that. So if, because some questions will come that may confuse you at times, you see, which of the following can be used to measure the external diameter of a rod? You will see vernier caliper, you will see, see uh, micrometer screw gauge here. So what is the answer? It's vernier caliper. But if the question comes like which of the following is best used to measure the external diameter of a very thin rod or a thin rod because of that thing that they put there your answer is going to be is going to be micrometer screw gauge instead of vernier caliper or a sheet of paper so this one is used to measure uh, things that are a much smaller value that need even higher precision if you understand me so we we'll move on now to understand the way a vernier caliper actually works so the way the vernier caliper is was constructed is such that the vernier scale is a fraction of the main scale. So if you look at this now, if you look closely at the diagram, you observe that 10 divisions on our vernier scale, as you can see, 10 divisions on our vernier scale is equal to 9 divisions on our main scale. So I would say that 10 vernier scale divisions is equal to 9 main scale divisions so basically the this is how it is always the vernier scale divisions are always one less than the main scale divisions so if the main scale divisions are let's say 50 50 divisions in the main scale for example the vernier scale will have 49 49 divisions in the vernier scale something like that so the idea is so that the vernier scale will be smaller than the main scale in a nutshell each divisions on the vernier scale will be much smaller for that is what i'm saying is this is one division from here to here this is one division on the main scale from here to here this is one division on the vernier scale so if these two scales are equal one will not be smaller than the other but as you can see let us say we want to uh, uh, get the, get use our, the, our fraction technique to, to know the length of one division if 10 divisions on the vernier scale is equal to one is equal to nine divisions on the main scale then it means that one division or one vernier scale division will be equivalent to what it will be equivalent to nine over ten that's nine tenths of the main scale divisions so it's like you divide both side by ten ten divided by ten gives you one nine divided by ten gives you nine over ten so nine over ten is equal to, we can also be written as 0 0.9 main scale divisions. As you can see, 0 0.9 is much smaller than 1. So 1 here, that means if this is 1, this will be what? This will be 0 0.9, if you get the idea. So this is much smaller. So the, this is it's important to know this, that because if you don't know this, we won't be able to, uh, to understand the formula for finding, for calculating. Some people don't know that there's a formula. You just look at it. And if you don't know that there's a formula, you get confused. The fraction of this, the, the short formula for the fraction, that is what I've written here. This is a fraction. But because not every time would we be having uh, 9 and 10. You can see in this case, we're having 49 and 50. So it's, we will be having sometimes on the, vineyards, on the vineyards, you can have 20 divisions. In this case, we had 10. Sometimes the vernier scale you can have 40 divisions. So basically, the formula for our main our vernier scale division is equal to n minus one over n. This is the formula n minus one over n. 
So in this case, our n, n is representing the number of divisions on the linear scale. n minus 1 will be, you subtract 1 from that number. In this case, it's 10. On our main scale, it's going to be 10 minus 1, which is 9. So we're going to move on now to explain what I mean by least count. The least count is the smallest division that our linear caliber can measure. So we can also say that the least count is just like it's the reading accuracy or it's, it's what actually gives the main precision of our linear caliper. The formula for least count is given as one main scale division, that is one division on the main scale, which is this, the one of minus one division on the linear scale, that is one VST. So this is just an abbreviation. So in this case, we're dealing with millimeters. Anytime you see large values like in, uh, in the range of 10, 20, 30, just know that you're dealing with millimeters. But if you see values like what we had in the previous slide, you can know that you are dealing with uh, in centimeters, something like that. Like in the second example, here we're also dealing in centimeters. So we'll come back to this one. This is purely millimeters. And the smallest division here, if I ask you, what is the smallest division here? That is, what is the division from on one on one scale in here? This is the smallest. So I believe it is one because when you count between zero to ten, you have ten divisions like that. So ten divided by ten is going to be one. The next division is going to be another one, which is two. This is another three, four. So a one division on the main scale is just one, and you subtract, you can write the units if you want, but it's not really necessary. Uh, we can write it at the end. One division on the linear scale is going to be what? So this is now a conceptual question because in order to get this, you have to remember what we said here that 10 divisions on the linear scale is equivalent to 9 divisions on the main scale. So if 10 equals 9, we say that one division on the linear scale will be 9 tenths of the main scale division, which is 0 0.9 of MSD. So it means that I said that you should not always remember that on the main on the linear scale, the length is always one unit less than what is on the main scale. That was why we said if this is the formula n minus one over n. So if we even use that formula here, n minus one over n, I believe we're going to be having nine over ten. 9 over 10 of of 1 or times 1 since our main scale is 1 and 9 over 10 of times 1 is still going to be giving us 9 over 10 which in decimal is 0 0.9 so when you subtract this i believe you have 0 0.1 millimeters something like all right so in centimeters remember 10 millimeters make one centimeters so you just say or you divide 0 0.1 by 10, 0 0.1 divided by 10, which will give you 0 0.01 centimeters. So this is our least count or our uh, precision, our reading accuracy for our linear scale or our linear caliper. It can't go smaller than this. If you want anything smaller than this, go and get a micrometer screw gauge. All right. So to solve this question now, we have to, let me write the formula, the actual value, which is what we are really looking for. The actual value is giving us the main scale, the main scale reading, but we're going to read this now. I'm going to show you how to read it. The main scale reading plus the vernier scale reading, we'll read the vernier scale as well, plus the vernier scale reading times the least count. So any value we get for the vernier scale, we're going to multiply it by 0 0.1. In this case and we'll now add it to the main scale reading now what is the main scale reading the main scale reading is the reading or the number of divisions just before the zero mark of the vernier scale so we're going to look at this is zero this is up to ten we're going to look at all the divisions just before this zero mark so we must not cross this zero mark i've highlighted it exactly so this is ten this is 11, this is 12, so you can see, we still have this one, it's very close, but it's also there, that is 13, so we're going to write it, we have 13 millimeters on the main scale, we're going to add it to, now what is the linear scale reading, now, the way we read, this is the linear scale, let's concentrate on here, the way we read it, we're going, we have different, we have 10 divisions as well, 
but we're going to look for one division one of these division that actually coincides with one division on the main scale if you look at this first one here it's almost close but it's a bit in front so i'm referring to the first division on the linear scale but if you look at this second one you can see that it coincides exactly that is i'm talking about this is exactly in line with the division on the main scale so that's the one we'll pick so what division is that, that is the second division which is two so we're going to write two times the, the list the list count which is 0 0.1 millimeters mm so if you simplify this what do we have we have 13 plus 0 0.2 which is equal to 13.2 mm very simple that is just it if you want to convert this to centimeter we can also convert it so let's use this formula to solve the question the second one this is two these are two questions actually we have a we have b we said that sorry we said that the actual value which is av is equal to the mean scale reading or just abbreviated to msr the mean scale reading plus the linear scale reading times the least count so this is a formula that is golden you put it in your head mean scale reading which you get from the main scale up main scale and the linear scale reading which you get from the linear scale down and the least the least count should be in your head you should not forget that one what is the least count it is 0 point, 0 0.01 centimeter or 0 0.1 millimeter so in this case i'm going to be working with centimeters here all right so if we look at our main scale what is now we're looking at the number of divisions just before the zero mark this is the zero mark here i've highlighted it so we have only one division it's not even up to one complete division it's a few fractions of a division so this is zero so it's approximately zero so i'm just going to write zero on the main scale reading so don't make a mistake of counting up to um one here or something it's you're counting don't count after the zero mark so zero on the main scale and what about the linear scale we're looking for that one division that coincides with or intersects with or is in the same line with the reading on or the, the division on the main scale so this one is not is not there this one is also not there yes it's, it's one is one of them is lagging uh, behind but this one let me circle it yes this third division coincides with this division on the main scale so this is what we are looking for it's the third one two three so we have three times we are going to multiply by our list count, which is 0 0.01 centimeter, and that gives us what? 0 plus 0 0.03 cm, which is 0 0.03 cm. So, this is our answer for this. So, how about this? We're using the same formula. Uh, main scale reading is what we'll first need to find. How many divisions do we have just before the zero mark on our linear scale? We have uh, up to one division so we have this is one so we won't count all these other ones that goes to the right so we are just going to write one plus so don't let this one confuse you everything behind sometimes it will give you incomplete or cut out sections of the main um, um veneer veneer caliper so they won't this just to confuse you okay look at this one for example this one i kept as an exercise which we will take home if you look at this you realize that it started from nine here so how do they expect you to know what comes before now you have to be very tactical you have to know that if this is nine if this is nine according to the other diagrams here you can see that you have 10 divisions from zero to one it means that you have 10 divisions also coming before nine so and they didn't even draw all the 10 divisions they only drew one two three four so if you count, what you are going to do is to count backward in this case. That if this is nine, this is going to be this first one is going to be eight point nine, eight point eight, eight point seven, eight point six. You get the idea because this is a point one point one. Uh, you are going to be counting by zero point zero point one like that on the main scale. So be careful not to be confused. It's very simple. All right. So on the linear scale here, uh, we said well. We're looking for the one that coincides with 
the mark on the main scale okay i think i've seen this one let me highlight it this one coincides so what division is that on the finial scale one two three four five six so this is six times multiply by our list count which is 0 0.01 centimeter so we have one plus 0 0.06 centimeter which is equal to 1.06 centimeter which we can also still convert to millimeter if we wish to all right so that is for that uh we're looking at zero error when we talk of zero error now i'm not really going to go so in depth into this but just in case you have a question that says zero error sometimes the vineyard caliper is faulty the same way we can have a faulty thermometer or any faulty instrument it could be that it was not constructed properly now take a take a look at this when when we have let me just uh all right okay i want to expand this so that we'll see it clearly all right so good when we have no zero error like in this case this is a very good uh vineyard caliper when it's not taking any reading the zero mark on the main scale coincides with the zero mark on the vineyard scale you can see it these two zeros they are on the same line and the ninth mark on the main scale also coincides with the tenth mark on the vineyard scale so this is a very uh, good and well working uh vineyard caliper zero error in this case there is no zero error there's no zero error but in this case you can see that mm -hmm, we have a negative error here the zero mark on the on the vineyard scale as you can see is falling backward it's not in line with the zero mark on the main scale even though no reading is being taken so you can see that there is a negative zero error and in this case here also the zero mark on the vineyard scale is not in line with the zero mark on the main scale so here we call it a positive zero error so the we call this positive when the zero mark on the vineyard scale is in front of the zero mark on the main scale so this is a positive zero error and the way we calculate it we use the same formula we use which is um we say the actual value is equal to main scale reading plus vineyard scale reading times least count so let's assume okay this is a millimeter so we know the least count is going to be 0 0.1 we multiply by the the vineyard scale reading is what what is the vineyard scale reading uh where which of these division coincides okay i think it's this this one uh, we have many that are looking as if they coincide these three this is what you do when you are when you see three that looks up to three that looks as if they coincide one two three you pick the one in the middle it's like the way we used to tackle me media mode you pick two and divide by two so this one you pick the one in the central in the center rather and that is what number is that? i think that should be seven one two three four five six seven so that's seven good so what is our main scale reading yeah main scale reading is zero we solve the question that looks similar to this but in this case it's an error because there's no reading being taken and yet the, it, it, we're having um, uh, the main scale zero lagging behind so this is zero so our actual value or our actual error in this case is going to be zero points we know seven times this is going to be what seven so this is just actually going to be zero point seven so this is a positive error this is how you write it is a positive error a positive error good so in this case uh, we are going to if we want to count our error in this case we count it backwards or better still we say that our main scale reading is minus one so i'm just giving us i don't i didn't want to go so in depth in this but let me just explain it our main scale reading we assume that is minus one remember that there is, seems as if there's no main scale reading here so because uh the the main scale reading is actually in front so we assume that the main scale reading in this case is minus one and our vineyard scale reading what is our vineyard scale reading here what where is the that um division on the vineyard scale that coincides okay with the one on the main scale okay i think it's not really clear but i think it should be this one 
which is the third one. So we'll say 3 times 0 0.1, which is going to give us minus 0 0.33 millimeters as the negative error. So this is negative error. Negative error. So, uh, okay. Uh, you made a small error here. Minus 1 plus 0 0.3 is not minus 0. Point. I thought I was thinking I was doing addition. So this should be minus 0 0.7. Okay, remember if you are like you're owing one naira and you have three naira, so this is minus 0 0.7. So you can also count it backwards when you are dealing with negative errors. So from here, you can if you want to, can you say one, two, three, four, five, six, and this becomes seven. So anyone. So when you have this, some questions can come in jam or why and say uh, if if the the actual value is given as this, but the vinyl caliper has a positive error, a negative error of this. What is the correct value? What was the error? You get my point. So in that case, our formula, you know, our formula used used to be actual value is equal to main scale reading uh, plus vinyl scale reading uh, times the least count that's all but in this case you are going to subtract the error you minus the error from it so if the error is negative you subtract this negative if the error is positive you subtract this positive so if you come across any question like that don't say it's too hard it's just to find that error and and whatever value was given because you just minus the error from it so all right so um let's look at this exercise quickly then we'll call it a day for this class the least count of a vinyl caliper is also known as this is also known as that's this least count which is lc it can also be called vinyl constant so don't let this confuse you you've seen it. it's vinyl constant another word for it what is the mean scale and the vinyl scale? The mean scale, if you are to define it, the mean scale is the is is above the vinyl scale, and it is the part where the reading is first taken from, either in millimeter or centimeter. Why the vinyl scale is a fraction of the mean scale? It's having its divisions are much smaller than the divisions of the mean scale. So, but two of them combine to make the vinyl caliper. The least count of a vinyl caliper is, so I believe we should know this one, it's either 0 0.1 millimeters or 0 0.01 centimeter. The difference between the value on the main scale division, okay, yeah, and one vinyl scale division is known as, okay, I think that is what we, this is what you're asking, that one main scale division minus one vinyl scale division this difference you say what is what is, what is it so remember we've touched it before we said it is the least count it is the least count which is this this is what you're asking for so the answer is least count least count or what we have known as or what we have seen that is also called vinyl constant the lowest mean scale division is now this is a very tricky question because the lowest mean scale division depends on if the scale is in centimeter or millimeter so our answer is it's either one millimeters or or 0 0.1 centimeters that's on our vinyl caliper this is the, the lowest mean scale division not vinyl scale division so this is what we're going to take as an assignment i want us to attempt solving this but remember that this is there's no error here so we're actually looking for this is we're taking actual readings remember your formula you get your list count you should have it in your head by now then you look for the you take your main scale reading first before you take the vinyl scale reading and don't forget that these are cut out portions of the vinyl caliper meaning that the scaling is incomplete count backwards if you need to or complete the scale with a pencil complete the diagram if you need to so you can drop the your answers in my in the, in the comment box so that i would review them or you send me a whatsapp message so thank you guys for watching if you enjoyed this video 
please subscribe to my channel and like this video.